But it's rare that you find a Hebrew Israelite who says that Jesus is God. In fact, I literally have a book by a Hebrew Israelite here called Proof Jesus is Not God. <laughs> Imagine having a book, you know, with this. I mean, come on, man. Come wow. on, man. Wow. And uh, this, uh, this book is a pretty wild book that's uh, really whack. I mean, the book also <laughs> gets into the flat earth as well. Wow. You know, but I mean, here the book is Jesus is not God, literally the, the title of the book. So these guys put out stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, most of them don't recognize who he is. Uh, and it's and it's a shame because without Jesus being God, you don't have the right Jesus and you don't have salvation. And Athanasius brought this up. I mean, let me just read from this book, page 68, and then I actually got to go. Yeah, yeah, no worries. Let us cover the scriptures used by Roman Christian pastors. Roman Christian pastors? These guys are bizarre in the way they describe us, you know, and then they get mad when we misrepresent them, even if we don't misrepresent them. <laughs> to corroborate their Jesus is God doctrine, when Roman pastors... Pastors use most of these scriptures in their sermons. They say, look, Jesus did this and God did this too. See, they are the same deity. That's not even exactly right. First, that does not make any conventional sense. What? Just because G God said he does not change and Jesus is the same forever does not mean they are one entity. So what? God never changes and Jesus never changes. It does not have to be that complicated. God was a savior for the people way before Jesus was born. And when Jesus was born, he was also a savior for the chosen people. The word Savior simply means one who saves. God saved his people multiple times throughout the Bible before Christ was born. He did not want his people to worship anyone else as their Savior but him. Okay, this is just this is just like uh, some serious ignorance with the biblical story here. Okay, and that's Jesus existed his birth in Bethlehem. Micah 5, 2 even indicates that he had uh, an existence prior. Because Micah 5, 2 is a messianic passage dealing with the Messiah. And when you read it, it says, of old? How can he have origins from old if he's born in Bethlehem at that time? Jesus says in John 8, before Abraham was, Ego and me, I am. And on and on, Jesus talks about in John 17, when he speaks directly to the Father, he talks about the glory that he had with the Father before. Jesus says in Revelation, Alpha and Omega, beginning and end. So he is to be identified with Yahweh, because there is only one Savior, not multiple Saviors. That's what Isaiah 43 says, which he literally quotes, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Yeah, exactly. So, the, the explanation here doesn't do it justice at all. The word Savior simply means one who saves. Uh, God saved his people multiple times throughout the Bible before Christ was born. He did not want his people to worship anyone else as a Savior but him. But guess what? Jesus accepted worship. At the end of Matthew, it says that they worshiped him after the resurrection, it says that, that it says that directly in the in the text. Read Matthew at the very end there, and then look at this. However, we also know that Jesus was born to help save His people, help save His people, and He saved them. Therefore, He has also become our Savior. It is not that complicated. These scriptures are also not a big deal. God is the first and the last, and Jesus was the first and the last begotten Son. He quotes uh, Revelation one, which says, "I am the first and the last, the first and the last begotten Son." So all this is, uh, you know, it goes on and on when you read this, and this is an example where they're not dealing accurately with the biblical text. So they do not have the biblical Jesus at all, and it's a major problem. You know, they want to talk about all this other stuff, but they are leaving out um, the reality that Jesus Christ is God. Second Corinthians 11.4, okay. for someone comes and proclaims another Jesus than the one we proclaimed, or if you receive a different spirit, from the one you received, or if you accept a different gospel from the one you received, you put up with it readily enough. And then he's, he's saying, like, why are you guys buying into this stuff, right? You shouldn't do that. And so there you see the indication that there is a, quote, another Jesus, which means, you know, not really one at all. And there's an interesting phrase there in the Greek for this, this another Jesus. It's actually um, alas eusius, alas eusius. And so that's what they're about. They're uh, Alas Eleusius, or I'm sorry, Eleusius, another Jesus.